Listen to Horabo Umbo, he's saying that we need to be a country that whose leaders offer solutions. Have you done all you could as a parliamentarian? I know you've been busy on the trail, but have you done uh, the best you could to really fix these challenges that Kenyans have to deal with every now and then as a representative of the people? Thank you very much. Uh, Article 35 of the Constitution is clear that every Kenyan has a right to information, including the Deputy President. And I want Honorable Bomboi to know that. Mm -hmm. And even His Excellency, the President of this country, has been on record blaming issues of corruption in his office. That doesn't mean uh, you're lamenting. When it comes to the issue of the, the fuel crisis, first, I want to disagree with the peers. Whatever he has said is totally wrong. Under Article 2 to 3 of the Constitution, and by the way, you should ask yourself, what is supplementary budget? Supplementary budget is whereby the government agencies are asking for additional funds for unforeseen circumstances. If we have many supplementary budgets, it's an indicator of poor planning. Let's start from there. So if the government agencies requested for additional funds, which must be approved by parliament, they have a right to spend that money because parliament has a calendar. It had gone for recess. But again, the leader of majority can request for a special sitting. Parliament can be recalled for purposes of approval. But to me, it was not a crisis as such because under Article 223 of the Constitution, the government agencies can spend money. So when Parliament is in session within the two weeks, they can seek that approval. So whatever the peers were saying, it is totally wrong. But what the Deputy President has said is very fundamental. When you look at the pricing of, uh, of fuel, there's a very big percentage of taxes and levies. It's almost 60%. So the fuel development levy is supposed to cushion consumers in terms of the stabilization of prices. So the issue we are asking is, where is this money? So he has a right to ask that. So Henry Bomboy cannot come up and start uh, saying that you're going to be president. It's only the God in heaven who knows who will be the president of this country. So the deputy president is right in terms of access to information. And Kenyans want to know, where is this money? Where is this money that uh, consumers pay in terms of pricing? So it is something that I was actually intending to to bring a motion of adjournment on the floor of the house to discuss this crisis. And it's to do with the, with the cartels. Cartels are involved. So every Kenyan has a right to information. How are cartels involved and who are these cartels? The government should tell us. No, no, no. <laughs> you said it on this show. Absolutely. Because, you know, if the money comes, when you go pay for your fuel, you, you fuel your car, you are aware about 55 or 60 percent or so, it goes to levies in taxes. No, so the issue is... There. Dr. Chris Mara, it, it's not so because um, the current price of uh, a litre of petrol is um, about 134 shillings. Uh -huh. And out of that, the landed cost is 78 shillings. Mm -hmm. The total levies and all... And taxes. How, yes, what percentage does it come to? 59.7 shillings. That's what I said. Which is 44%. I said around 50%. So so it, 60, that is around 50 to 60. I said around 50 to 60. <laughs> and I'm just so changes you, have... Uh, it's 44%. <laughs> yeah. So please carry on from there. So to the nearest... Uh, and and to the, tell me... To the tell nearest me. percentage, actually I'm right. 44 is not close to 60. I said, 50. To 40. I said 50 to 60. <laughs> Dr. Chris. <that's laughs> I said 50 to 60 percent. Okay, Round carry on. Friend. Uh -huh. That's fine, because you know the figure is 44 percent. Mm -hmm. Just answer me, because whatever EPRA, Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, is doing in, setting, in fixing these prices is coming from the law itself. That is true. Which can be reviewed by Parliament anytime if you want. Uh, absolutely. So when you tell me about you're going to call for German motion... To discuss. Does that, uh, yes, discuss, but that, that doesn't substantially... Um, fix anything. The motion of adjournment, Parliament is there to discuss any matter of national importance that affect the people and resolve. So when we have a crisis like this, it is purely in order to have a motion of adjournment to discuss the crisis and to call upon the relevant agencies to come up with mitigating strategies to expedite. Because to me, this crisis has been there for long and it's something that should have been sorted out. Because parliament being away for that particular time, government still under Article 2 to 3 of the Constitution they can still spend money, even if it's not been approved. So when parliament comes, then it can be able to approve within the very first two weeks. So what I was trying to respond to the, the relevant peers is was misleading Kenyans. And uh, if he misleads Kenyans, it can call for his impeachment. 
So to discuss a motion of adjournment, it can be maybe even in the supply chain. So if I told the marketing firms, for one reason or another, as per what Honorable uh, uh, Atandi had said, mm -hmm. if I told they are holding, let's say, the stocks for purposes of anticipating the increment of prices. Because when you look at the forces of demand and supply, yesterday my car almost stole and we bought some fuel in Eldoret. The price was even higher. There was some higher premium. But we used some brokers who managed to send us some fuel of, uh, of, of 20 liters, but they say there's some facilitation fee we had to pay. So you can see Kenyans are in incurring more money I mean, and carrying more costs. Okay. So the government is the first line of defense, particularly at a time when it comes to issues of transport, because it cuts across the, the, the entire economy in terms of transport, in okay. terms of production. No, no, no that, 